Just waiting for Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Don't waste your crinkles now. <laughs> Zoom is live. All right, let's do this officially. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our November 1st, 2022 Borough Council meeting. Tonight, we're conducting our monthly Borough Council meeting, both in person and virtually. We're glad you have joined us for this meeting. During the public participation portions and public hearing portions of tonight's agenda, community members joining us via Zoom may raise their hand virtually. And at the uh, appropriate time, staff will unmute your microphone and announce your name. You'll then be able to speak and address council. Uh, we will start with members of the public who are here in council chambers with us tonight, and then those joining us remotely. We will have two public comment periods tonight, uh, one towards the beginning, one towards the end. Participation is limited once per a public participation session. And due to the breadth of tonight's agenda and presentations, we are asking our participants keep their comments to under three minutes and that the first round of public participation will be one hour. Thank you again for joining us. We'll now begin this meeting formally with the Pledge of Allegiance and moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With that, we'll start with roll call. Mr. Manager, Ms. Berkeley. Present. Mr. Carmonito. Present. Ms. Dugan. Here. Mr. Kirkner. Mr. Moore. Here. Ms. Webb. Present. Mr. Weiss. Present. Mr. Ewald. Here. Mr. Mayor. Here. Manager, assistant, chief, solicitors here, you have a quorum. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Kirkner uh, is out of town for work and was not able to dial in tonight. Um, with that, we'll move on to presentations. Uh, item three on our agenda tonight, Mr. Slicer. So before we get started, I would like to announce that prior to tonight's meeting, council held an executive session to discuss matters of real estate related without limitation to the consideration of the advertised ordinance condemning a portion of UPI number 15-9-91.1, the ordinance condemning a portion of UPI number 15-4-10, and the ordinance accepting dedication of Ashburn Road and a portion of Bunning Road on UPI number 15-4-10. At this time, I understand that Council Member Weiss would like to make a motion. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Solicitor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that the consideration of the ordinance approving the condemnation of, a, of an 11,338 square foot portion of Chester County, UPI number 15-9-91, Dot one is hereby authorized to be tabled and advertised for a future meeting if and when deemed appropriate by borough council president. Second. A motion by Mr. Weiss, second by Mr. Carmonito. Questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is a 601 uh, with Ms. Berkeley abstaining. Anything else, Mr. Solicitor? That's everything for now. Okay, thank you. With that, we will now open the first round of public participation. Uh, again, as I just previously mentioned, we'll start with members of the public who are here uh, joining us live. If you wanna to come to the podium, state your name and address. And then uh, as we move through the list, we'll move over to members joining us on Zoom, um, approximately um, 
halfway through this uh, first round. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Tom DeLuca. I'm here to speak about two of the motions on the agenda, the dedication of the two roads and the condemnation of land within Fillmore Village. The, the Odessa developer cannot meet all of his approval conditions. The administration has put forth an eminent domain motion on tonight's agenda to circumvent one unmet condition. Fillmore Village residents do not want a connection to Odessa. Against our wishes, council conditionally approved the Odessa project in December of 21. Two of those conditions cannot be met. One is an off-grade safer trail crossing, and the other relates to tonight's eminent domain motion. Mr. Uh, Moskowitz, does not own the right of way for connection to Ashburn Road. So I'm, I'm gonna repeat that because I think it's very important. He does not own the right of way for connection to Ashburn Road. Likely due to this fact, he was prepared to present a new no connection Odessa layout for planning a review this past July. The administration was not interested in a connection, a no connection layout. The borough's proposed eminent domain ordinance intends to condemn the missing piece of land from Fillmore Village, which would join up with the lot they condemned in 2015 and Ashburn's right of way. The administration is attempting to utilize the eminent domain law to overcome the developer's unmet conditional approval. To me, this feels like a devious use of the law. Please table these two motions. Please work with the developer on an alternate Odessa layout, which lacks an Ashburn connection. And once and for all, please find an alternative location away from Fillmore Village for the administration's long sought after Northern Relief Route. Uh, I'd like to end with a quote. When it comes to eminent domain, I believe it should be judiciously used and only when absolutely necessary. Uh, you probably don't recognize that, but I just quoted your 2015 council president, the honorary James Kowalski. He, made, he, he was quoted as saying that after he dissented on a motion to condemn an adjacent parcel of land next to the lot in question tonight. He was one of two dissenting votes that day. So in closing, council, please, please do the right thing here and vote this motion down tonight. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Andrew Karnowski. It's my first time to address the council. So uh, I I'm a bit nervous, but I'm very grateful for this opportunity to speak to you. Uh, I'm a uh, board member of the Fillmore Village HOA. I've been uh, serving on the board uh, in the past and my wife in between, and then I came back. Uh, Fillmore Village is very much a, a community of families, but also a community of seniors. Uh, it's a community of young professionals. It's Fillmore Village. And if you visit Fillmore Village, you'll notice that, especially on nights like Halloween, which we just had last night, which was a ton of fun as I was walking my daughter around in these wonderful streets, beautifully lined with trees, and enjoying, and it's not lost on me how lucky we are to have a neighborhood like that, how lucky we are to live in Phoenixville. Where we have a council that you know, takes care of that and protects us. And I'm speaking here, not on just for myself and my family, but for the whole neighborhood, a lot of people have reached out to the board and said, what is the board doing about this? And we said, what? Because we were a bit surprised by all of this. Uh, I wrote a seven minute speech, but I'm gonna cut it down a bit. I'd like to say that, We've been working with Mr. Kirkner, uh, Ms. Webb, we've not had a chance to meet you and you're invited to join us at the board anytime. In fact, everybody's invited to join. In fact, that's what we'd like to really ask for, not only for the two motions to be tabled, 
but for a question and answer session where all the residents of Fillmore Village can have their questions answered. Excuse me. Questions such as who's a sponsor for this? Where does this come from? Who's going to maintain the streets? You take Ashburn, you take Bunning, who plows them? Who paves them? What about the sidewalks? And on the board, we can't really answer this because we don't know. There's been no communication with us on how this works, except for one person, excuse me, and some solicit our solicitors have been working with Mr. Pratt, and thank you. Mr. Moskowitz joined us for a meeting over the summer, and we've met with him several times. After all, he was our developer. He's a developer of Odessa and, and other communities. And he met with us and said, you know, I've been meeting with the Planning Commission, and I've been meeting with members of the council, and I have three options for the board. We can connect Ashburn through to the planned Odessa community, or we can do a emergency vehicle only access, or we could do no, no access at all, no connection at all. The, <laughs> the board, we thought we were like, are we being had? Because this is essentially a known issue. We know, you know, we don't want this connection. You know, uh, Greg Ritter has been fighting it for years. You guys know that, um, but it's not just him. And so we told Mr. Moskowitz, we prefer option three, and we gave him a, for, uh, a formal letter, no connection at all. Interestingly, he had no problem with that, at least to, our, to what he told us. He said, that's fine. We've already got plans to have the roads in my new community connect to the other two streets, Fillmore and Township Line. And we said, that's good. Enjoy. We'll have more neighbors in Phoenixville. That's good. We don't want the road being connected through. We don't understand where this is coming from. We would like some answers. We'd like to know how to plan our budget. We just did a reserve study. We just commissioned a survey. We're thinking about what can we do with that property? Parking, which we lack. A dog park, which would be great. Solar panels would be awesome. Uh, I'm a little bit alone in that one, but uh, I think that what I'm saying to, uh, to you is please table the motions tonight and until all the answers are, until all the answers are had so that the residents of Fillmore Village feel confident and comfortable with the council. Thank you. I'm gonna be brief um, because there's still a lot of what I wanted to say. So I'm Marilyn Harvey. I'm also on the board of uh, Fillmore Village HOA. And um, the request to table the motion tonight is to come to Fillmore Village and really answer a lot of the questions. As Andrew mentioned, um, we worked with Mr. Moskowitz and we thought the road wasn't going through. So we were supposed to have our annual meeting. We have many, many residents on the phone tonight. We canceled our annual meeting in order to try and protect um, our community. We had, Andrew mentioned, we had a survey done and I can present this to the board, the council tonight. Um, Basically, the part for eminent domain to have the road go through is this, this missing piece. But there was also this whole piece of, on the survey that was done that was um, not part of the, it was excluded from the developer plan, but it's all part of the deed that we own. So in addition to this missing piece, what, um, there's some decisions that need to be made about this red area because there's only one parcel number for the whole thing and it's, it's not been filed. So there's going to be another portion that needs um, some reconciliation as well. So I'm happy to leave the deed plans that we um, paid much engineering to do a survey on. But again, the request is to table the motion um, and see if we can come uh, to a few more village and answer some questions. Thank you. Uh, hello, good evening. I'm Jane Dugdale, speaking on behalf of Phoenixville Area Transition and Green Team. We've urged uh, Council several times to take uh, an action on the Kindergarten Center that Council seems to feel it's unable to do. I understand that uh, you all are engaging on the subject, and I want to thank you for doing so. In the meantime, we will continue to urge action to keep public land in public hands. 
We know the borough by definition is committed to strengthening the local community. We are committed to bringing awareness to all, including you, about what would truly do this. One thing we all may not be aware of is how damaging economic globalization is and has been and continues to be to our lives and community. So Phoenixville Area Transition invites you to our fall community meeting at the Colonial Theater on Sunday, November 13th, 5.30 for 6 p.m. And together we'll screen the film, the 50 minute film, Planet Local, a quiet revolution. And afterwards, led by some local experts, we'll reflect on its message. Economic globalization is a lose-lose for everyone. And the best way to be resilient is to localize our economies, environment, and cultures. Please come at 5.30 to network in the lobby, pick up some goodies, learn about actions to build local resilience. There's no charge for the film, but we encourage attendees to register and make a donation to the theater. Thank you very much. And we do hope to see you all at the Colonial Theater Sunday, November 13th. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Ms. Logan, if you'd like to queue up any members on who are joining us via Zoom. Mr. Pakarisame, your microphone is unmuted. Uh, thanks, council members. Uh, this is Srinivasan Pakirisame. I live in Pilmore Village. Uh, I echo what Tom and uh, Andrew said. Uh, we had a discussion with many of our um, neighborhood members. And uh, there are more questions than answers. So we would like to table this motion for now and have a discussion with Fillmore Village residents and uh, answer all of our questions. And if you're comfortable, then please proceed the motion. Thanks. I have no more hands raised at this time. Any other members who are joining us via Zoom uh, that would like to take part in this first round of public participation, please feel free to raise your hand digitally and we will call, we will have staff uh, calling you as queued. We'll give that just one more minute for anybody who logged in late. Okay, seeing no other uh, comment from the Zoom, universe and no other comment from the room. We will close the first round of public participation and move on to the remainder of our agenda. The next item up on tonight's agenda is our consent agenda, uh, mainly consisting of items from finance. What is council's pleasure for our consent agenda? Mr. President, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion made by Ms. Berkeley, second by Mr. Weiss to approve the consent agenda. Questions, comments on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Moving on to item six of tonight's agenda, we have communications and council participation. Uh, any updates or comments from members of, of the board today? Um, I would just like to start by uh, thanking the Hankin Group. We had a uh, delightful groundbreaking today for the Hankin Project, uh, which is the Phoenixville Affordable Senior Housing Complex at 115 Buchanan. Uh, we had um, pretty much all of our state and local legislators join us for a, uh, a celebration of them starting the, the project, uh, which is long fought and, uh, and I think going to be a, a outstanding outcome for the community at our old public works building. So I do think the, I do thank the county, PHFA, 
and all of our state and local officials who joined us today and uh, the Hankin Group for, for putting on a nice event. Um, other members of council, any updates or communications? Mr. President, I would uh, welcome the public to come and enjoy the Phoenixville bed races on Saturday uh, in Reeves Park. Um, beginning at 11 o'clock. Uh, it will benefit uh, two local nonprofits, our Code Blue Center at Ann's Heart, as well as Good Samaritan. Um, and Code Blue will be opening for the season very soon. So if you're interested in donating or volunteering, please see the Ann's Heart website. So we've had a number of participants uh, recently speak at our meetings about the kindergarten center. Um, and, and council asked me to address uh, your comments uh, because they've been put in a difficult position where uh, legally I've advised them to uh, limit their comments to protect the legal interests of the borough. However, uh, I wanted to let you know that we appreciate all your comments and that we hear you. Uh, you know, council's tasked with a, a really difficult and nuanced position of deciding uh, when to exercise powers of condemnation and when not. And it, it's a unique legal position in this case because borough council uh, was one of the bidders for the property. Um, however, being a bidder, um, along with that comes uh, additional legal considerations uh, that have to be taken into account. And uh, for that reason, we cannot just show up in court uh, and object to the sa sale without a strong legal justification, such as a breach of law uh, on the part of the district. Uh, and, and to this point, we are unaware of that. Uh, however, you know, the kindergarten center is ultimately owned by the school district, and it was the school district's decision to choose who to sell that property to. Uh, like any other buyer, the borough had to compete uh, with other interested purchasers. Uh, we thought we made a strong offer, and unfortunately, it wasn't accepted. Uh, as we understand it, the fair market value offer uh, that's on the table is about four and a half million dollars, and the borough uh, just simply does not have that much extra money in the budget at this point. Uh, all indications to us, uh, and we've inquired, are that there is not grant money available for condemnations, um, which the acquisition at this point of the case center would have to be. Um, at the same time, even if council was not affected by a lot of the uh, particular legal issues uh, that are at play with this project, uh, four and a half million dollars is a lot of money to that can be put a variety of places and it's a hard decision and it's not an easy decision that council has to make in that regard and they try to do their best um, and although council has recently used its powers of condemnation all of those exercises have been for right-of-way pedestrian circulation and parking purposes in order to increase the safety of our residences our residents by providing improved circulation in the borough. In the past 15 years, the borough has only authorized the condemnation of four parcels of land, only when felt absolutely necessary for the public welfare. And none of these parcels were valued anywhere close to four and a half million. Please be aware that the borough's inability to acquire the case center is in no way a sign of support of the rumors of what the potential purchaser who we believe is toll uh, what their plans may be for the property. Uh, Toll has not submitted anything to the borough, has not applied for any permits, asked for any zoning interpretations, or had any communication with the borough. Uh, so for us, the rumors are just rumors at this point, um, and we can't comment further on what their potential thoughts for the property are. Um, however, if the purchase of the property is ultimately made to Toll, uh, and any plan is submitted to the borough by toll, uh, it will go through our rig rigorous review process by our engineer, planner, 
zoning officer and myself, um, as well as planning commission, zoning here and board if necessary and borough council. Um, so, you know, we just wanna reiterate, we hear you, we don't take this decision lightly. Um, there's a lot of nuances in the background that we're considering um, and, and we appreciate your participation. Thank you, Scott. With that, we'll move on to our uh, monthly mayor's report, Mayor Ursler. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. And thank you to all of those who are joining us virtually. A couple of things uh, last month to report on. Uh, we wanna thank our friends and congratulate our friends in Upper Providence Township for their firehouse dedication on Black Rock Road, a beautiful new facility over there. Uh, also a shout out to our Phoenixville Police Department who helped coordinate a barbecue competition, uh, the funds of which uh, a little over $5,500 uh, will be donated to Orion Communities, uh, which is basically neighbor helping neighbors right here in downtown Phoenixville. Um, also, Orion Communities hosted their Music for Everyone event this last month. PAX hosted their gala, which I may have appeared as Elvis at. And also, uh, I want to give a special shout out to all my dear friends at Schuylkill Elementary who came to tour uh, the borough building as well as the police department and a number of facilities in downtown Phoenixville uh, this last week. So thank you to all of our friends in Schuylkill Township uh, for doing that, our elementary uh, students at Schuylkill Elementary. Uh, congratulations also also to the clinic, uh, the Phoenixville Clinic, which will be renaming itself the Phoenixville Free Clinic, uh, actually had their gala this last uh, week, and they raised over $40,000 through their silent auction uh, to help with their mission. This is also their 20th year in operation. So congratulations to the clinic. Uh, congratulations to the Parks and Recreation, Phoenixville Hospital Tower Health, um, our Office of Emergency Management, and the Phoenixville Regional Chamber of Commerce for a, an extraordinary trunk or treat event, which was held at the, the brand new rec center uh, on the north side of Phoenixville. Uh, we had uh, probably over 3,000 uh, young people attend. It was wonderful to see them all out there in costume. Uh, upcoming events on the 12th, we have a senior center bingo November 12th. If you have any, uh, would be interested in participating, please uh, visit the senior center website. Uh, no uh, also on that day, on the 12th, there's a multicultural fair at the uh, Phoenixville Area Middle School. Check out the Phoenixville Area School District website for more information on that. On November 19th, um, the police department will be hosting a gun buyback program that Saturday, November 19th from 12 to 3 p.m. here in our lobby. We ask that uh, if you are uh, bringing a gun back uh, to be participating in this program, please bring it in a container, uh, locked and certainly unloaded, and uh, you will receive a gift card for turning in that uh, gun. Also on November 19th is the Chamber of Phoenixville Gala, the Phoenixville Regional Chamber Gala. If you are interested in attending that, please check out their website. On uh, November 26th, we have Burn Off the Bird. That's the Saturday after Thanksgiving. It's a great family, uh, fun family event to attend, and that's going to be taking off from the rec center up on the north side. Uh, also, December 2nd at 5.30 p.m., uh, we'll begin festivities in our downtown area that will coincide with our tree lighting event, which will take place at 7 p.m. Uh, lots of festivities uh, will be taking place all throughout uh, the downtown on December 2nd, again, starting around 5.30 p.m. Uh, December 10th will be the annual Phoenixville Firebird Festival, and we hope to see everyone out there. And I think that gets us to our next borough council meeting, and I'll tell you how everything went. Thank you all so much. Thanks for being here, and thanks for being an active participant in our incredible community. Thank you, Peter. Uh, every month we do make a call for uh, residents to take part in any of our uh, vacancies on our various boards, commissions, and uh, other working groups. Uh, we do have vacancies on a number of boards and commissions and committees. If you're interested in joining <clears throat> or taking part in any of these, please reach out to your uh, borough council person, and they can certainly help you through the process. Uh, right now, I know we have openings on Tree Advisory, Human Relations, HARB, and Beautification Advisory um, that could all use some uh, neighbors to help take part in, uh, in guiding the, uh, the future of the borough. With that, we'll move on to new business. Um, item nine on our agenda. The first, uh, first item under item nine is the review of the 2023 Enterprise Funds and General Fund Draft Budgets, our favorite time of the year. I will turn this over to our manager. Sure, thank you, Mr. President. Um, as required by borough code, we're, uh, we're required to put together a draft budget and present it to you uh, uh, 
30 days prior to uh, anticipated adoption. Uh, that meeting uh, would be our normal council meeting on December 13th. <clears throat> so we're well within uh, that time frame of getting the draft budget out. Uh, later, uh, there'll be a, an ask that you authorize the, the advertising of the draft budget and then auth also authorizing uh, an advertise scheduling and advertising of the ordinance for the tax levy. Uh, but I, I want to qualify that that is uh, preliminary. Uh, what I'll talk about tonight has a lot of numbers in it. Uh, I think most of you that's been involved in the time that I've been here, uh, as with most budgets, you're high uh, at this time of the year, and there's still things that we don't know. There's still a lot of information. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. There's still a lot of information that we're bringing in. Uh, as an example, one of the big items is the uh, assessment for all of the property in the borough. The county does not release that information until probably another two weeks. So there's a lot that we're still waiting on, but this is generally having worked with our, uh, our staff, we start in late July. Uh, we have meetings with the finance committee uh, starting in July, uh, really get into it in August, uh, uh, deep into the woods by September uh, and October. And now we're we're at a place where we're uh, reasonably close in the understanding of the asks of all of the departments versus the information we have on the incomes and revenues associated with those. Um, and then we have to do some more uh, sharpening of pencils between now and December 13th. With that, uh, the borough's budget is comprised of basically five uh, uh, main components. One is the general fund, and then there are four enterprise funds. Uh, there is a, a parking enterprise fund, a water enterprise fund, sanitation uh, enterprise fund, and wastewater uh, 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 enterprise fund. Those are standalone funds. Uh, the taxpayer dollars do not go to fund those. They, they stand on their own. Uh, and then those, because of the work we do from the staff, there are allocations that come from those to offset some of the costs on the borough side of things. So with that, I'll start the uh, uh, the routine if uh, uh, Jen or Megan is uh, put up the, the slide. And... <clears throat> Can you uh, make it to full? There you go, thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, next. So I'll start with our pension fund. Uh, and uh, those of you that have read a lot about uh, pension funds in, in the Commonwealth, uh, especially with the Commonwealth run fund, uh, they're not well run funds. And um, uh, I'm very proud to say that the, the borough's pension funds uh, are right, right hovering at the 100% uh, funded. That's rare air uh, in the Commonwealth. Uh, most municipalities that are doing well are 70 to 80 uh, percent. So we're uh, way above that. And our auditor, as you hear, those of you that are around in the June time frame, uh, always uh, exemplifies the work that the staff uh, continues uh, to do as it relates to the pension funds. So these are the numbers. Um, the non-uniform fund, which is everything but the police, uh, has a balance right now of 13 million. Um, we get funds. Uh, uh, from the state uh, to finance that, and the employees contribute two percent of the wages, uh, and then there's a there's a makeup. But the the minimum municipal obligation for 2022, actually, yeah, 2022 is 390,119 uh, dollars. That's what makes the balance up. This is, uh, and then the same scenario uh, as you can see on here with the police fund. They have a 17 million dollar uh, balance. Uh, the MMO for that is 303. The difference is the, the police do not contribute to, to their pension fund, and as such, the borough makes up the difference. In this past year, uh, the good thing for us has been that the, the income that we got from the state exceeded the requirement that we needed to make for uh, uh, the state aid uh, for, the, uh, for the MMO. So it's a, it's a juggling act. Uh, the, one, of the, one of the things that, that gets lost in, in the equation is that the uh, I'm gonna get my notes here real quick. In these in these balances, the uh, I lost my note on here. I 
I cannot find any other note that I had. I apologize for that. I had a train of thought and, and it's gone. The, the, the main thing to take away from here is that the borough's uh, uh, pension funds are well-funded uh, and the borough makes up the differences, which is what, that's, what, that's my point. Where other municipalities fail is that they don't, they don't support that MMO the way this borough council does. And they've been doing that as long as I've been here, which has been, this is my 15th budget with the borough and they've continued to support that. That's the difference between uh, the council in Phoenixville versus a lot of the municipalities uh, around us. General fund debt service. So this fund tracks the interest and principal payments made on what we currently have as the 2022 general obligation bond. There was, we had an original 2012, uh, we refinanced it in 2022 around March timeframe. And I think uh, it could be argued that we hit it on the very day that the, uh, the interest rates decided to escalate. Uh, uh, we were just below the 2% rate and those of you that know anything about the interest rates right now, they're not near close uh, uh, at all to 2%. So we hit it just right. Uh, by doing that refinancing, we were able to save almost a million dollars uh, without extending the length of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the terms of the bond. And so therefore over the course of the remaining few years that we have, uh, we'll make reduced payments over those years. And that's where the savings comes from. It's not a cash that comes back into our general fund but it's a, it's a savings over the course of those years. Um, fire department. So this, is, uh, this shows you where the funds come from. Uh, we get local uh, service tax revenue. We get fireman's relief. Uh, we get some liens and interest. Uh, and so we take a total income uh, of about 195,186. What I will tell you is the, the fireman's relief is a pass through. So, Really, the, uh, the the dollar amount that comes into the borough is about seven seventy four thousand two hundred dollars. The expenditures, though, one million six hundred ninety six. So the general fund has to transfer over to take care of the, the fire department fund, and you'll see later that the fire department fund is a. Uh, we have a three tiered tax. Uh, we have a general fund tax, a fire department tax, and a recreation tax, and so that transfer will come through and it reflects in the, uh, in the tax of the, uh, the millage. Parks and Rec, very similarly, Parks and Rec revenue is 281,750. We do get some liens and interest uh, with a total income of 281, but the expenditures uh, again are 1,664 uh, plus we have to transfer from the general fund to make up the difference there. These are both quality of life issues. Borough Council has continued to support the fact that we need a fire department, we need the recreation department. And so the general fund picks up the, uh, the slack and sends funding over to make up the difference. And in this case, 1,382,600. Liquid fuels is, a, is pretty much a standalone. It's a, Liquid fuels is the, the money that we get from the state based on the, the number of miles of road that we have in the borough, uh, based on a formula of the amount of gasoline that is sold in the, the Commonwealth. And so uh, in the pandemic years, as everybody knows, there was not a lot of driving that was going on. And so our numbers uh, came down as did everybody, uh, uh, every municipality, uh, but they're now starting to come back up. Uh, so our, our liquid fuels, allows us to do certain things. And so some of the things that we can do are capital requests. And in this case, we can buy, or uh, we're looking to buy a dump truck with a plow and spreader at 110,000, and then a asphalt emulsion uh, tar buggy, which is where we fix the cracks in the roads, uh, 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 lay uh, tar down on some of the potholes and then put some tar around that to, to smooth those edges out. Uh, for a total ask in the capital of the liquid fuels of 127,250. That I said, the, the liquid fuels, we get funding from the state. In, in this case, we're anticipating 477,993. Uh, that number uh, uh, can go up. It doesn't normally go down, uh, but the pandemic uh, years it did. We're now starting to climb back up. Uh, we do have the expenditures uh, that we're looking at 358,194. That's 
these capital requests, but it's also other things. Uh, we have to buy salt and store salt for the upcoming winter. We have to buy, uh, take care of uh, street lights, all kinds of different things that uh, are associated with the roads. We're anticipating about 358,194. Uh, and based on the income that we're getting, based on the expenditures we're anticipating, we'll have a net plus of 119, and that will go into the fund balance of 1,493,000. And you say, well, why are you carrying that kind of money? What will happen in the springtime is I'll sit down with the department heads and we'll start to look at road projects uh, based on what occurs over the winter, roads get tore up and the like. And so we'll sit down and start to figure out uh, if we can do a combination of some uh, replacement of water lines or sewer lines, uh, mill and overlay those roads, and then and, and, and with that overlay, uh, come up with a cost factor, and that comes usually out of the fund balance. And that's when we go to council and say, okay, we're going to do this particular road project. We're anticipating three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. It comes out of that that fund balance. General fund capital. Um, for the police department, we're looking at uh, two vehicle hybrids. Uh, we rotate our vehicle uh, fleet about every five years or 100,000 miles. Uh, this is a year, and uh, we all, almost always average two vehicles per year. Uh, and then there's some other things that, that we look at. In this case, the red dot sidearms, these are uh, uh, for, their, uh, for their weapons. It's an, it's an aiming device. Um, they did a trial and a test with one of them. They've made the recommendation to borough council that that's one of the things they want to use. An intoximeter, um, as it would indicate, in, uh, intoxication to test uh, blood alcohol. Uh, currently, Celebrate software, which is a uh, software device that allows the uh, the ability to get quickly information off of a cell phone uh, and and turn that cell phone back over to the individual. Currently, today you'd have to hold on to that phone uh, for a very long time. And of course, the other side, everybody gets a little anxious about that. This allowed them to do it in a very short order. On the street side, uh, a mini track loader, which is some of you might call it uh, similar to something like a skid steer or a bobcat. That's kind of what that is. Uh, it's just uh, mainly for, for getting into tight places. Uh, we're looking at an LED uh, light tower. Uh, we have, I think we have two of them at this point. One's sort of failing. Um, when they're out there working at nighttime, uh, the roads need to be well lit. And this is a safety factor that we uh, consider essential. And then for facilities at this time, we're, we're looking to increase our uh, electric vehicle charging stations throughout the borough, not only just in the parking lots, but also here at Borough Hall in anticipation that we'll transition in the next uh, year to two years, uh, uh, moving from uh, gas vehicles to hybrid vehicles to pure electric vehicles. Uh, and when we do that, we need to be what we call make ready, where the, the building needs to be prepared uh, with the electrical uh, setups. And so we're looking at doing that uh, in 2023. And then finally for fire, uh, we're looking at a, a 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning truck, which is an electric truck as part of the, uh, the build out at the fire station, as well as the recreation center, uh, st uh, center we did put in uh, two head charging stations at each of those as part of the, the overall build out. Uh, so when the chief's truck uh, comes in, he'll be able to charge that vehicle right there at the fire station. Um, and so that total capital uh, request is 204,984. Then we have some personnel requests uh, recreation attended part-time, uh, uh, that's a $22,775 ask. On the fire department side, we're, we're at looking to take, we have two full-time persons at this point in time. Uh, we are looking to take them up to uh, assistant chiefs. Um, that's a cost of $263,000. And then we're looking at, currently our part-timers work through the volunteer fire company. Um, We've made a recommendation that we'd like to take, since we own the building, we own the apparatus, and we're moving into now uh, full-time personnel, uh, we think it's appropriate that the borough takes over the responsibilities of the part-time positions 
uh, and puts them under the management of the chief and the assistant chiefs uh, versus under the uh, the volunteer. That's not in uh, uh, meant to be a uh, anything negative towards the volunteer. It's just it's an administrative practice, uh, and our HR department is able to to handle that. Dina will probably take me out tomorrow for saying that, uh, but we. Uh, uh, we're looking at that. That cost is five hundred eleven thousand three hundred twenty-one dollars. So, what that means is that with all of those things on the general fund, we're looking at an income of about fifteen million six hundred thirty-one thousand seven hundred three. Uh, our expenditures are more than what we're anticipating taking in at this time. Uh, Sixteen million two hundred thirty-three thousand three hundred sixty-nine. We're showing at the moment a deficit of 601,666. If nothing changed, that would be a, uh, a millage and the general fund of 4.74 in recreation 1.57 and fire 1.75 for a total of 8.06. For those that you wanna know the percentages, what that means is right now, we are looking at a 9.99% increase for the 2023 budget. I always caution that that percentage is not reflective of where we end up. Uh, and it's certainly uh, uh, by comparison, uh, compared to the, the county and compared to the school district, it's, it's about a $70 ask for all of the things that we've uh, hit on there. But as I've said, we still got, and I'll say this again in a few minutes, we've got more income that we believe is coming in and we've got some other things that we have to adjust. So I think those numbers are gonna come down, but because we have to schedule and advertise the ordinance, I have to have something to start with. And this is what we start with. Um, sanitation, sanitation, we're, we're looking at no capital uh, at this point in time. Uh, although I will say, um, we are, uh, Mr. Watson and I are uh, looking at going to a site visit on Thursday or Friday um, to look at electric, an electric charged vehicle for trash truck in the recycling side. Uh, that's a big number. Um, and if we like the things that we see, we're, we may come back with a recommendation that we look at our vehicle replacement fund and look at uh, uh, recycling grants from DEP to maybe order that vehicle in 2023. It's about a one and a half to two year lead time. So it would allow us to build up the actual capital request in another year. Uh, we are looking at making a, uh, a, a change in one of the positions in the sanitation department. This is a $5,000 cost, uh, essentially, uh, the, the person's been doing the, uh, the job as the, uh, the laborer too. Uh, the issue is that if you are in one labor position and you move in and you're doing work in the other, we have to, uh, we have to pay that through a process that's from an HR perspective, it's, it's, it's just, you know, uh, paperwork intensive. Uh, since we know we're already doing it, our recommendation is we're going to change the position. So, uh, and that total cost will be $5,000. With that in sanitation, our anticipated revenues at this point in time is 2,204,816 and our expenditures are 2,120,018. Uh, we're showing a uh, net positive 84,798. Uh, that's uh, with a fund balance of 122,518. That puts us in a very uh, uh, untenable situation as from a budget perspective. And so we're looking at, in this particular instance, raising our rates uh, to $99 for the, the uh, fiscal year 2023. Uh, that's still well under, uh, we've looked at the market around us. Uh, every entity that is doing this business uh, on the private sector is well into the $100 figure. So we're, we're still under that. Uh, and I think we do uh, a much better job. We do our recycling, we do our our trash pickup, but we also do uh, the leaves, we do the yard waste uh, and a myriad of other things, notwithstanding we're soon in 2023 gonna be switching our uh, process from anaerobic digestion into hydrothermal carbonization. Say that once or twice or three times. Uh, so 
all that to say, we're building for the future. Uh, we also need to build our, our reserves up and we don't want to get, we don't want to, don't want to put ourselves in a bad position. And so we're raising the rates to where we think that we can while still being uh, uh, providing a better service and uh, a lesser dollar amount to our citizens. Parking fund. Uh, basically, we're looking at uh, acquiring additional EV charging stations for the parking lots throughout the borough. Um, we, as some of you know, we acquired the, uh, the property at 395 Bridge Street, which is uh, the adjacent property to the borough parking lot is, is 381. The property next to that is 395. Uh, 395 is the one we're looking at parking, uh, making it uh, parking available uh, in 2023. Um, if we get to the place we think we can, uh, we should be able to open up another 50 parking spots in the, in the heart of the downtown. Uh, and I'm not sure what a spark parking kiosk is, but uh, I think it's meant spare. Uh, uh, so we're... We, as everybody knows, parts are hard to get. And so we need to backfill uh, and make sure that we have in case something goes down. So we're already in one of those. And unfortunately, because we've had uh, a couple of uh, uh, close encounters of the, of the human kind uh, on the streets, uh, we wanna protect our, our assets and our people. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sad that we have to do this, but in this case, uh, uh, because we did have to go to court to deal with it uh, previously, I, I think uh, our, our request of body cameras for these folks is the right thing to do, and so we're asking for that. A total of 259405 uh, as far as capital goes. And then as far as revenue goes, uh, we anticipate $1,257,055 with expenditures of $1,008,000 uh, uh, projected. Uh, uh, income over expenditures of 248,800. We currently have a $555,000 uh, fund balance and the proposed use of the fund balance is 259. It'll leave us a, a projected fund balance for 2023 of 296,524. This is what happens when you're doing this at quarter to five before your meeting in the evening. Water fund. Uh, we do have a, uh, a bond, uh, uh, we, again, it's self-liquidating. Uh, the bond was for 692, $692,922. As of December of this year, uh, the principal balance will be 577,240. Uh, the bond is projected to mature on November 15th of 2027. Uh, for 2023, uh, the debt service is 151,565. Um, and then in water fund, we have a, a number of capital uh, uh, capital requests. I don't believe any personnel, no, just capital. Uh, a submersible RO, uh, ROV camera. Uh, the reservoir has a, a top on it. And so the only way to see what's going on is you have to do a, uh, just like to do uh, in the ocean or anything else, you run a camera down in into the side there and it takes a look around and see that everything is, is uh, A-OK. -okay. That's 5,000, uh, a new fence around the reservoir uh, of $90,000. Uh, we were gonna replace the hypo generator electrode coil, uh, big name <laughs> for uh, electronic device, 25,000. We have some basin uh, patchwork uh, and, and joint resealing that has to occur uh, on the basins, so that's 65,000. Uh, we're looking at uh, replacing the sidewalk uh, at Reservoir Park. That's the area on the extension of Franklin as it goes up into uh, the park, 10,850. And then uh, we have a sludge pit valving that uh, we need to fix and that's 57,000. Uh, so on the water treatment side, it's uh, 252,850. And then on distribution, uh, and our water is, is made up of, of different areas. Uh, and so distribution side, uh, we're looking at eight inch ductile pipe for $80,000 uh, to do some work on Callow Hill Street. And then an insertion valve machine, uh, which uh, our guys are uh, be able to do some uh, uh, some good work without having to farm it out uh, to, to the, uh, the contractor side of things, 90,000. So uh, 
that's 170 under distribution. So total water capital of 422,850. Almost there. Um, our revenue is 4,902,000. Our expenditures are 4,818,000, uh, a net income of 84,191. Uh, but because we had sold our water assets uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we have a good fund balance. And so uh, normally 84,191, we'd be making a recommendation to increase the water rates. But because we have a healthy fund balance, uh, we're able to uh, hold a line and keep our water rates uh, as we have since 2020 at $8.70. Uh, most of the private uh, water companies are in the $15 per thousand range. So uh, we think we're doing a pretty darn good job and we've uh, been able to hold the line on our rates. As it relates to uh, uh, wastewater, uh, we also have a bond there, 2,798. The balance right now is 2,331,000. Uh, it, although it's still also set to uh, mature in 2027, uh, and we're making debt service of 612,191 in 2023. Um, we have one capital under the pumping side of $60,000. That's to replace a pump over on City Line Avenue. And then um, uh, we're looking to have a mechanic relief operator. We got uh, some retirements that are approaching. And the, because there's a lot of uh, uh, difficulty in, in hiring folks. We want to be able to uh, reach out and see if we can find some folks, get them on board, get them trained well before the persons that are scheduled to retire do so. Uh, and so that, that cost us $106,500. Yes. Our revenue, uh, we're expecting 3,689,000. Uh, our expenditures, 2,905,000 uh, with a net total of 783,418. Uh, we currently have a fund balance of one million eight. Uh, to cover those other costs, we're looking at using sixty thousand. So between the two, uh, we're looking for a projected fund balance of two million four hundred fifty-five thousand. Uh, but we also know that the uh, the Phoenix Neo uh, hydrothermal carbonization is going to continue to use up some of the uh, the fund balance uh, as we get ready to go online, uh, hopefully in January of uh, twenty twenty-three. Uh, with all of that, we're still holding the line since 2020. Uh, we're not raising the rates. It'll still stay at six fifty-five, six dollars fifty-five cents per thousand. <laughs> so, net net with all all five uh, uh, funds, uh, the total borough ba uh, budget uh, for 2023 is projected to be twenty-seven million eight hundred uh, twenty-seven million eighty-five thousand three hundred thirty-eight dollars. So budget impacts. Um, well, there's some things that we just don't know at, at the moment. Uh, and that's the, the slide that we have to try to figure out between now, uh, November 22nd, which will be the finance committee's uh, uh, hopefully final meeting, uh, make the adjustments that are necessary, get better with those numbers that I, I mentioned earlier uh, and come in with a better uh, uh, tax levy rate uh, and a better percentage for those that keep track of it by percentages. The things that are affecting us right now, um, we have, we're still dealing with economic global price increases, um, gasoline, uh, those kinds of things, cost of goods and services. Uh, they're just, they're just all over the place. Uh, we're having the same impacts that everybody else is, is having. Um, and, but we still have to provide the services. Uh, and then this year, uh, 2023, we're required to, uh, make a significant adjust, uh, adjustment financially in uh, providing emergency medical services. And at this point in time, we received uh, RFPs. Uh, there's a lot of information in there. This is very new for our entire staff and we're trying to understand it in a way uh, uh, how best to manage this. Uh, and it's, it, it is a significant number uh, regardless of who we look at. And at this point in time, I've, I've suggested to council, we're not gonna add this into the budget as a number. We have some uh, methods to, to look at this. There may be different ways to uh, uh, assess how we uh, finance year one and year two, 
uh, and we got to take a look at that. So that's going to be in that equation as it comes out in November with, uh, uh, with the Finance Committee. But then on the other side of that as well, in talking to our uh, uh, health insurance and our uh, workers' comp and, and what have you, what we've budgeted for that's in there today, it appears, it appears that those numbers are going to get better which means that those numbers that I've said are going to get better as well. Uh, real estate assessments, as I said, we don't get that until around the second week in November. Uh, all indicators suggest that what we've budgeted uh, is lower than what we anticipate those numbers will be. So that will help our bottom line. And the same thing goes through with uh, earned income tax. So. Uh, our next meeting is with finance uh, on November 22nd, and then hopefully we resolve these issues uh, favorably with better numbers uh, by council meeting of December 13th. So the last couple of bullet items I just want to you know, emphasize to uh, members of council is that uh, we're financially stable uh, and we have a sustained uh, standard and poor's bond rating of AA stable. Uh, that's just uh, one under uh, AAA category. Uh, nobody was going to get AAA during the pandemic. It just wasn't going to happen. So uh, the fact that we stayed stable is a good indicator of the type of budget that we've been managing over these past years. We have fully funded pension plans. Again, uh, very rare uh, within the municipal uh, municipalities in Pennsylvania, as well as across the United States, quite frankly. Uh, we have healthy fund, ba uh, fund balances. Uh, these, you know, uh, it's important to understand we keep fund balances because things happen uh, as we've all seen. And we wanna be able to keep the integrity of our quality of life by being able to manage those things as they might occur versus having to reach further down in and take loans or things of that sort. So these fund balances help us do that. They also help us uh, as we pursue grant funding, because we're able to provide matches where a lot of municipalities don't have that ability. Uh, the borough has been very, very successful uh, in, in, grant, uh, in its grant pursuits. Uh, as council knows, we've done a lot of significant projects with uh, a, a lot of grant funding. That's how we're able to do that. Uh, uh, my ego will tell you that I, I don't normally say these things, but I am very, very proud of the work that all of the staff does. Uh, uh, I don't do this in a vacuum. I, I, I let these folks lead, give me information. I have arguments with them. I sit down with them. Um, they tell me names that my mom didn't know I had, uh, and we get there. Uh, that's the way it works. It's a team. And, and I'm very uh, proud of the leadership of, the, of all, all of our folks, not just the senior leadership, but all of staff. Uh, so this proposed budget presents a spending plan for 2023 that reflects your policies, your priorities, and your objectives for this community. So well, thank you. Mr. Crack, thank you. And, and thank you to staff. This is, uh, it's a very large budget. I don't think most people in the <clears throat> community recognize that it's a $27 million small city that we operate here. Um, and it's a lot of departments, a lot of staff, and a lot of effort that goes into trying to keep everything runs, running smoothly, uh, as well as forecasting um, what, based on the information that we have available to us at the time, as well as you know the mandates that state that we have to post a number tonight, even though we don't have all the information, which is a fun consequence of state mandates. Um, with that, we have two items to authorize and advertise uh, based on the presentation. I don't know if council had any questions or if they're prepared to move forward with advertising. Uh, I'll make a motion <clears throat> to authorize the advertisement of the 2023 draft budget. Second. Motion by Mr. Weiss, second by Ms. Berkeley to advertise our draft budget. Questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. And what is council's pleasure for item C? Mr. President, I'll make a motion to schedule and advertise an ordinance for the adoption of the 2023 tax levy. Second. Motion by Mr. Carmenito, second by Mr. Weiss. As Gene mentioned, we're looking at an 8.06 millage. Um, again, that number is likely 
as it has for the last seven years for myself, gone down uh, at least somewhat to sometimes somewhat drastically uh, over the course of the next three weeks. Um, any other questions, comments on this motion? Yeah, I will just make a quick comment that, you know, usually I just like it where people understand this is the highest it can go. So that's just everybody like it doesn't get any higher than this. It will likely get lower, but we don't know for sure, but it's the highest it will go. This so. is our not to exceed number. Right. Yes. So we can always come in and put it in at a lower number when all the final information comes in. Any other questions, comments on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. That will take us on to our ordinances and resolution portions of our uh, agenda tonight, uh, starting off with the DCNR uh, grants application. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to adopt a resolution for the submission of a DCNR, the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, Bureau of Recreation and Conservation, Community Conservation Partnerships Program, grant for the French Creek Trail extension recommended in County Committee 4-0. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Moore, second by Ms. Berkeley. Uh, this will be a nice, um, if, if awarded, this would uh, provide a nice connection between, um, well, downtown all the way to East Pikeland and the Schuylkill River Trail. So it is certainly a project I think is uh, uh, worthy of um, applying for. Yeah, just so people are aware, the Schuylkill River Trail is on the north side of the creek. French Creek Trail is, and we have a portion of it built behind the borough, um, you know, the trail that runs along the Borough Hall from the K Street Bridge, heading back toward where the fire station is. And this is intended to help continue the construction of that since some property has become available to be, to be able to move forward with it. Yep. Any other questions, comments on this motion for this application? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. We also have a PennDOT multimodal grant uh, to consider for tonight. Uh, yeah, Mr. President, I would like to make a motion to adopt a resolution for the submission of a PennDOT multimodal transportation fund grant, the reconstruction of the Maori Road, as recommended in Committee 4 to 0. We have a motion by Mr. Weiss, second by Mr. Moore. Questions on this application? I'd just like to comment that as someone who lives right off Maori Road as, and also represents the West Ward, um, I'm looking forward, hopefully, we can get uh, as much as possible for this and we can move forward with that reconstruction of that road um, really would uh, provide a great opportunity for uh, both the Northridge and the Westridge people to be able to walk to the trail rather than, you know, either go along a very dangerous road or drive to the trail like a block and a half. So that I'm looking forward to help we can win as much as possible for this. Absolutely agree, and, and the storms have uh, absolutely clobbered this, this section of road for us. Uh, any other questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Next up, we have a motion to uh, repeal and replace uh, fire and emergency services uh, uh, in our ordinance book. Mr. 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 President, I'll make a motion to adopt the ordinance to repeal and replace Chapter 7, Fire and Emergency Services. Second. Motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by Ms. Webb. Questions on this updating of our codes? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. And next up, okay. Uh, next up is our first item to consider for eminent domain. This is relating to the Ashburn Road section that was alluded to earlier. Uh, in order to start discussion, what is council's pleasure? Mr. President, I'll make a motion to adopt an ordinance authorizing the condemnation by eminent domain of real property located at Chester County UPI number 15-4-10 for municipal purposes. I'll second. We have a motion by Mr. Carmineau, second by Mr. Weiss. That opens up conversation. Um, for the, for the discussion on this topic. So we've heard much about uh, over the course of the last weeks. Mr. Moore. Uh, yeah, I will just speak that uh, as the representative of um, from Borough the Liaison to the Planning Commission, as well as um, the Inaugural Council, 
uh, had extensive hours uh, listening to the development of the Odessa project um, and was also educated on the original vision for um, the Northern Relief Route. Um, carrying that road um, originally was envisioned to carry all the way across to directly across the southern end of the of that property uh, to, um, to township line. The plan that was ultimately discussed and adopted by both planning commission and this commission was to build a, a boulevard that goes across the gully, across the trail, and up into the Odessa development and then back down. Um, and it was always the intention of the developers and I guess of this of this community, of this borough, it's always been the intention of the, the borough that that development be connected in three different points. Um, Township Line Road, Fillmore at the top of the road and at the, uh, at, the, at the eastern end where it comes through Ashburn Road. We've always heard that there's been a lot of concern, disagreement and opposition from the Fillmore residents. And I've heard it a lot too. And I have a, a great deal of concern about the use of eminent domain when it may not be necessary to connect the, um, this development um, directly at that end of the of the um, uh, of of the development through the Ashburn Road to Fillmore to the Fillmore Village and then the rest of Fillmore Village. Although I do see a lot of arguments for it, and I think we just need to make sure we properly air that discussion. Is there an absolute? What was what is I think my colleague's opinion as to whether it's really necessary to build this extension? Thank you, Ms. Moore. I'm, I'm happy to tee off and, and at least explain my point of view on this, uh, having uh, sat through the entirety uh, of the Odessa um, project from for all iterations between council and uh, between my time on council and my time on planning commission. Um, the number one concern I have on this is that Fillmore is a three ton road. Um, <laughs> that is the lowest ranking that a road can get by, by PennDOT or engineering or um, uh, construction terms. Uh, below that is, is a gravel driveway. Uh, so below that ranking, sorry. Uh, there's not a gravel driveway underneath it. Uh, Fillmore Road is, is weight restricted and it has been for as long as I know uh, because of the failed tunnel that is beneath it that is a prior railroad tunnel, the tunnel that has not been serviced. And again, as far as I frankly remember, I don't ever remember a train going through there, but there was at one point. Um, because of that failed road or, or um, reduced capacity road that now creates a untenable situation, in, in my opinion, for emergency services to access uh, anything in that, in that upper corner of our, of our own borough. Uh, without having an Ashburn connection, our fire trucks, our EMS, our trash, our school buses will have to leave the municipality. Uh, and go down an exorbitant number of other roads in order to, to get there, depending on where they're coming from. Um, my understanding is basically anything over an F-250 shouldn't be traveling on film. That's problematic in my mind. And so that, that's, and I understand there's, there's arguments and, and a, lot of, um, a lot of emotion and a lot of concerns about this. But my number one concern on this has always been, we do not have proper emergency service access because of the condition of Fillmore Street. So I'm happy to just tee off and with, that's my, all and, things aside, that's, that's my, my main point of contention that, that has driven um, wanting to discuss this. And I've thought about this question because I've heard it discussed before. So particularly with the emergency vehicle access dispatched from our new fire department, you're saying that they should, remain in the borough to, to go to Odessa that they shouldn't take, or it would be improper for them to take Township Line Road, like just basically go up Paradise, out Nut, and up, I mean, I live out there, so I think about this, um, you know, out Nut, and then up 
township line road. It's basically like four lights and a stop sign. And that it would be more appropriate for the fire department to be able to, or emergency vehicles to respond through the borough. And that, that kind of, I find that odd. Well, I think I mean, it's fire, EMS, trash, school buses, Amazon, nothing should be traveling on Fillmore. So it, it yes, I, I do think it's a consideration when we're designing proper city planning that our future potential residents are able to be reached by our emergency services without them having to leave the municipality to get there. And also do like, what kind of impact does that have on response time ultimately? You response know. time, wear and tear. Nut Road is always a pleasure at four in the afternoon, heading west. Wasn't the Northern Relief route on our planning since 1999, which is before any of this, like before Fillmore Village, before Odessa, before anything? It, it, it has been a, some form of, of a design for longer than that even. I think even going back to the 70s or, or maybe it was just not the 90s. Um, and, and the current approved design that this would, um, that, that is at the Odessa site is, is not, a, um, is not a, a, a version of the Northern Relief Route. It is a road that is just a uh, community road through, through the community. Um, the original alignment was a, a wider boulevard that um, went along the top side of the, the Moose property. So it is, they're, they're two very, you know, the, the redesign that was brought forward on the Odessa project did change the scope and caliber of of the roadway. So it, it dramatically reduced it from what would have been a wider, um, straighter road to a much more residential community scaled road, in Ms. my opinion. <laughs> Ms. Webb, from a, from a factual perspective, um, the Northern Relief Route was considered at the time of the Fillmore development. Um, and in fact, the association public offering statement, which is what the builder or declarant that uh, created the community um, provides as legal notice to people initially purchasing those units. Um, the, that notice, the public offering statement includes a statement that Ashburn would be connected and extended to township line. Um, certainly over the years, uh, as borough council president explained, the thoughts evolved, uh, but the underlying thought has remained has any exploration been done into like any, is there any alternatives through the north side to give such relief to emergency vehicles or is, or is this proposed use really the best option? I guess not the best option is the only option. Uh, in relations to this, this project, um, it's at least of my opinion that, that you know, having the access, um, it, in relation to, to also serving the Odessa project as, for fire and emergency services, which was something that was uh, the one uh, gentleman mentioned with, was the idea of having an emergency services only access, um, you know, in, in order to, uh, to then provide the service. I, so, because the, the, the other connection off Fillmore is, is past the tunnel. Um, I don't know that there's any other, there's not that many other spaces to put a, any other roads in that corner. So I don't know that anything else was um, discussed. And I do understand that from the construction of the ledges onward, um, multiple borough administrations and borough councils have worked with the developers who, who built housing along there so that it was a two lane road and meant to be a two lane road all the way across the top past where what was Friendship Field now is Pat Nattle Field, where our path, you know, and our reservoir park was on the other side of it, then past the Franklin Commons development. And it was meant to be a straight line. And it made sense that when Fillmore Village was built, that that next piece would be there. And then the Odessa developer also was showing a design that would take the road straight across. Now, of course, as I guess, I, I don't know whether the rest of the, the council is aware, there was also an intention that um, the developer in East Providence of the Kimberton Glen housing would also have a road 
that they call cro um, crossroads or not crossroads, but they would also cross, um, they would have a boulevard that would match up with our design and go all the way to 724. Well, they didn't design theirs that way. They had reasons, but that ended up being catty corner to where we would have put it. So the, the notion that, and this is the thing that I've been struggling with since I've been on council, the notion that the Northern, the, that the Ashburn Road extension would somehow provide the neighborhood connector solution that should have always been built wasn't, was at the, the passage of time and the decisions outside of our control um, made, it, made that particular approach to traffic management moot. So the main thing that we're now challenged with, I think as a council is, Odessa went through planning. Odessa had a redesign and um, they presented a new plan. There was a multiple planning commission working through that development, but their design for that road was always present. And then um, it was approved by planning commission. It was discussed in detail in front of us. And then we approved it. So Odessa is approved with three entrances except there's one piece of that. And so therefore we've approved the notion that there will be an entrance from Fillmore Village into Odessa. That's, that is a planning decision. Now there is a piece of property that needs to be acquired in order to do that. And it's a municipal purpose, which is what you're supposed to use eminent domain for, but I, I, I feel like there's something that there's there. I don't know that there's a better solution, but I'm not, I'm not really happy about using the power of eminent domain to do, to take this piece of property from the Fillmore village HOA to make that happen. It, there's just something that cuts wrong for me. So I understand all the issues. I understand all the opposition. I understand the traffic management purposes but I, I'm, I'm unconvinced that we should use our power to do this one. So again, I appreciate all of the comments from Mr. Moore. Um, I have voted against eminent domain on occasion um, because of my personal beliefs about it. My concern in this specific situation is access to emergency services for all of our residents. And that is my biggest concern. So I would like to know before we move forward in opposing or approving that, what emergency services would look like for residents and access to those emergency services without this access. Because I, I think that's that would be the only reason why really and I think that's the biggest factor. There's been so many things that have changed. I understand the idea of transportation management, all, all those things, but that's so convoluted at this point because the plans have changed so much to your point, things outside of our control. My only concern in this discussion is that every single one of our residents would have the appropriate access to emergency services and that we're not, not considering this because we don't wanna make anyone unhappy, but someone then is gonna fight pay the price of not having the right response time. Um, that would be my, that's what our, what our <clears throat> obligation is, I believe. No, no, nope. This is council discussion only, I'm sorry. And, and it's not only the access to, it's also the response time back. So it, it's that, that um, just to be clear, it's the ability to, to go to that residence and then if needed to take them to Phoenixville Hospital, um, then adds an additional um, convoluted way to, to get back there. Um, Mr. Cremonito. Yeah, I, I wanted to add that my concerns in addition to emergency access is uh, creating community that wouldn't be connected to Phoenixville and connected to the grid. We talked about these great communities we have and we'd be creating a new development of future Phoenixville residents that wouldn't have direct access to our town and would have potentially um, inferior emergency access uh, to their community too. So I just wanted to consider our future residents and how we're planning for the future and connecting um, our new communities to the existing ones. 
Mr. Weiss. Uh, yeah, could someone explain for, for me and, and maybe just for everybody on council what this piece of property is like? What is this, uh, uh, you know, this isn't land that a house is on or land that is uh, being utilized for any purpose currently. And, uh, and maybe Scott, maybe if you could. I think either our, our solicitor or our manager would be able to, to give a better uh, yeah, explanation. Sorry, sorry to put you on the spot, but I think it's valuable oh, to the conversation. That's, that's fine. Um, Thank you. So the, the portion of property we were talking about is about 2,600 square feet of area. Um, and it is at the current terminus of Ashburn Road. Uh, it's currently what's considered a uh, community open space as an association. Um, per the plan, there's no improvements on that area. Um, I, I haven't uh, seen it recently, uh, but grass, landscaping, trees, that type of stuff. Um, because it is community open space, um, associations, and I haven't reviewed this declaration in particular, uh, but just speaking of my general association knowledge, um, associations are limited in what they can do with it. Um, so my knowledge and the plans uh, show a, an unimproved piece of land that has limited use uh, for the association. Okay, thank you. Can I just confirm to one of the questions, if this were to pass and the borough took it on, the borough would handle all plowing, maintenance, all of that? We, we would handle the, uh, the infrastructure within the road and the road itself, the sidewalks, as all sidewalks are part of their part of the property, the ownerships of the HOA would still take care of the sidewalks. But that area of uh, Bunning and that area of Ashburn would be the borough's responsibility. Okay. And that, that's in relation to the next item, actually. I mean, that, that's the dedication that, oh, that enacts the, um, right. So, so if, if the next item were to be adopted of the dedication, that's where snow plowing, et cetera, is, is now a borough responsibility for that stretch only. I, I guess, too, another consideration is I know that we, through infrastructure and that committee, have tried to get the engineer involved with the like looking at the tunnel, assessing the tunnel, but we only have so much control of that. So if that route, road is to fail, what are our options? I mean, a fire truck weighs how many tons? 20 tons? 30 tons? Our, our trucks average between 18 tons and 30 tons, depending whether it's the, the engine or the ladder. So they're, they're big trucks, and there's... Uh, in some circumstances, PennDOT can, can grant um, bonded waivers where it would allow emergency access only over certain sections. There's um, some bridges in the county that, that have that sort of uh, that, that bonded waiver. Uh, this is not one that would, would be eligible for that. Uh, there is no, uh, from, the, from the county or state perspective or PennDOT, I guess, uh, there's no excuse for, for anybody over three tons to be using that road. No justifiable excuse. And at this point, we don't have control over the tunnel. Like we can survey some of that area as we discussed in infrastructure. And I know that our engineer is still working on that, but we don't have control over what's under that tunnel or fixing that or changing the road in a way that would sustain this type of impact or this type of wear and tear. Is that co that, correct that's, understanding? That's correct. The, the tunnel itself uh, is owned by uh, Valley Forge Railways. It's part of that, uh, uh, the, their ownership. Uh, we've had preliminary look at the, the underside of the tunnel. Uh, it's clearly failing. Uh, there is uh, debris that continues to come down. Uh, to answer your question about fix, uh, one, one way to uh, try to resolve that would be to go into the tunnel and do what they call an archway, uh, metal archway with concrete fill in between the existing roof and the, that as you can imagine, getting in and out of there, extraordinarily expensive to do that. Uh, the second would be a preventative way of uh, uh, by spanning the area over the tunnel uh, with a, a bridge uh, in anticipation that it was going to fail. Uh, one would be to 
um, uh, work with the owner of the rail, uh, the railroad and, and implode it and then fill it in and then run across. In almost any of those, you're talking about six months to a year of closure of the road because you we're not gonna allow somebody to drive over it if they're underneath. We can't allow somebody to drive over it if it's uh, uh, being worked on from above. So, uh, and all of those are expensive. Um, the, to give you an estimate, um, that's about a two, you'd have to bridge it about 215 feet, give or take. Uh, the bridge that we just had installed uh, by the steel point development over French Creek at the fire station, uh, that, that's about the same distance of bridge that we would need and about the same width sands uh, sidewalk. But uh, generally speaking, you're talking about a 1 to 1.1 million just for the bridge itself, not talking about the pier work and um, uh, soil things that you have to do with the soil, plus uh, getting uh, approval, almost in all likelihood approval of the underlying property owner to be able to do that. So um, there's a lot there. Uh, all that to say, there's a lot there, uh, but we do know that uh, our observations, we don't have the final report, but uh, I've seen enough of the pictures to know that it's the debris is coming through, water's coming down through their freeze thaw over the course of years. It just continues to, uh, uh, collapse. Also a question, if this ordinance does go through tonight, um, like what would the next steps look like? Is it the, like, does building start tomorrow? Is it final steps? Is there- and Scott, to Scott or Jean could there? answer that um, in terms of the, how these, this is not something we, as Scott mentioned earlier, this is not an action we take frequently. Um, so having some background on on how these things would or could work is is helpful. It would probably not happen quickly. Um, just from a legal procedural perspective, um, if council were to vote to authorize the ordinance tonight, that does not necessarily mean that a condemnation has happened. Uh, we would need to file certain paperwork in court um, and there's a variety of deadlines and things that are associated with that. Um, and then, you know, you're looking ahead to when are we seeing a road uh, that's going to connect us. Um, I mean, a year is an optimistic estimate. While I have the microphone, I do just want to add that uh, this ordinance was advertised on October 24th, and the day after our last meeting, when we authorized the consideration of this ordinance, um, I was in communication with the attorney for the HOA to let her know um, so that they were fully informed of what was what we were thinking about um, in council. These are not small decisions and we do not take them lightly. Um, is there any other questions or comments from council? I just had one follow-up question. So if plans for Odessa were to not come to fruition, what would happen then? I mean, the options are on the table for the borough. Um, obviously the consideration here is for the public purpose and with interest rates as they are, there's a real likelihood that Odessa uh, never comes to fruition. It certainly could. Um, however, uh, the uh, midget track, uh, we recently were able to get a reaffirmation of our easement uh, over the northern portion of that property. Um, so uh, we would certainly have to go back to the drawing board uh, as far as engineered plans would go. Um, but if um, you know, council continued to be interested in building this road, um, we would have the ability to do so. 
it would, it would preserve abilities, but action wouldn't be required either. That's correct. Okay. I mean, you you guys uh, are are really good at working with uh, the state to try to get grant funding. I'm sure that would be the first step. Um, I, there there would be a lot of machinations for sure. Um, yeah, just one final comment. So I think what we're looking at here is uh, there's an approved plan for a development within the community. If something is going to be built there, I'd like to see that be a connected, uh, an area connected to the community, primarily for emergency services, but also to, to Mr. Carmenito's point, just as a general community kind of concept of a, of a connected um, uh, community. I think we've explored as many options as we can for workarounds. Um, and I think if a development does not happen here and a road is not built in the immediate future, we have lots of options for how to proceed. So I think, am I summing up what you guys are hearing? Is there anything I'm missing here? Any well, major salient points that I should be considering? I think your point, uh, your predecessors, my predecessors uh, in 1999 anticipated connecting Black Rock Road Township line road. At the end of the day, everything that has evolved over the course of time, THP properties, um, now Fillmore uh, expansion at uh, the 400 Franklin with the Renaissance Academy, we required right away. We've actually redesigned the area between South Street and Crombie uh, in phases to uh, take out the dog leg that was that was there as well. Uh, this was not done in the vacuum. Uh, I know it appears sometimes that those things look like that, but this has been a long uh, dialogue over 22, 23 years. Um, it's, you know, there's new residents uh, that are here uh, that weren't part of that. And I, I can't answer that for you or for them, uh, why they weren't informed, but Everything that we've talked about in the time that I've been here, I have always talked about the Northern Relief Route as a name, as the connection from Ashburn out to Township Line Road. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. Appreciate the contact. That's all for me. There, there was one, the, the one comment regarding the, the quarter midget track. Um, and this is because um, I had heard some. Uh, feedback prior to the meeting this the the discussion that we're having here has no uh, future impact on that parcel. I know that's something that's come up uh, under previous discussions. Seeing no other discussions, no other comments or um, proposals, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5-2. With that, we have a follow-up ordinance here uh, to consider. What is council's pleasure for item E? Uh, I'll make a motion to adopt an ordinance accepting dedication of a right-of-way of Ashburn Road and Bunning Road. Second. A motion by Mr. White, second by Ms. Berkeley. Questions on the motion? Um, I did hear members of the public talk about you know having questions and, and not understanding and i think we did try to clarify those here but i didn't know and if i don't know how this if this is okay and if the motioner would be okay with this but maybe we agree to meet with them in some way to answer those questions before this you know we we vote for this today but under the condition that we would answer those questions for them and make sure they had those those answers i don't know if that's feasible, but I, I just wanted to put that out there um, after discussing, you know, or hearing them discuss like what their questions are and then us discussing them. I didn't realize that that was so unclear to people. I, I thought people knew when the road was dedicated that that meant we were taking on responsibilities. So right. perhaps we could Above make sure and that below, happened. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, uh, I think Mr. Crack uh, answered most of the um, technical in terms of, uh, you know, the uh, the, the installation of uh, equipment under the roadway, the, the maintenance, repaving, milling, all that up on the roadway. 
uh, the snow plowing, salting, et cetera. Uh, but I believe any, uh, any technical questions, um, first, of course, uh, you know, we have two council reps for the North Ward, uh, but we also, uh, any further technical questions can, of course, be relayed to either our solicitor, our manager, our public works director. And I think all that information can be, um, you know, duly satisfied. Um, I don't know if you want to build that into the motion or not, but, um, and to be clear, this is the section of Bunning to Ashburn, not all the way down. Uh, it's not the entire uh, length of Bunning. So it is uh, Bunning to the, um, the Southern edge of, of Ashburn, I believe. It might not be the technical term for cart path, but. Yeah, if I can amend my uh, motion accordingly, specifically for the portion of, of bonding. Um, but I think the, the dialogue piece, I think that's kind of just uh, an assumed aspect of our interactions with the community. I don't know if we really need to put it in the motion. We, I, uh, I don't think you need, well, as far as the portion of bunning goes, I don't think you need to amend your motion because okay. our ordinance reflects that that's being considered. Um, as far as the discussion piece, uh, I, I leave that to council. Uh, if you would like to make it a part of your motion, uh, we'll need a motion to amend the motion um, before we vote on it. That's up to you, Beth. <laughs> no, I, but I was proposing the yeah. amendment to the motion. That's why, yeah. I think that if we feel we've satisfied that and are willing to have conversations, to make sure they understand as we move forward, I'm fine with not amending. I just want to make sure I, I, and maybe it's just because I'm involved. I've had to vote on these types of things before. I didn't know that someone wouldn't understand that when we take dedication, we're responsible. So I want to make sure that they realize that. Correct. I, I think Ms. Webb and, and Mr. Kirkner would be uh, happy to. Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say yes. Happy to meet and okay. answer any questions. If, and if I could add, um, we did advertise this ordinance twice on October 13th and October 18th, 2022. Uh, we also mailed direct notice to all budding property owners uh, and the association. As stated, I directly contacted the attorney for the HOA the day after our last meeting where we authorized advertisement of these ordinances. Um, and we did not receive any timely requests for a hearing to be held on this particular ordinance. Um, and the offers of dedication are reflected in the record plans that are recorded in the Montgomery, or excuse me, the Chester County Recorder of Deeds uh, and the uh, deed that provided the property uh, from the declarant to the association. I'll just offer that since the council has voted to uh, do the uh, eminent domain and we are taking this property pursuant to building a, a connection that I support taking the dedication because since we made it important that the borough be connected to this development, we should be responsible for these roads. I agree. With that, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on item E? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0, and I'll add a little bit more to liquid fuels in the future. Item F was, uh, was tabled for future discussion at the beginning of this meeting. Brings us to section 11 of our agenda. We do not have any hearings planned for tonight. Under uh, uh, section 12, we have our reports from committees, boards, and commissions. We will start with planning commission, Mr. Moore. Nothing to report. We did not have a meeting last month. So the next meeting is next Thursday, um, the 10th at normal hour of six o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Ms. Dugan with Historic and Architectural Review, uh, Review Board. Uh, given the early uh, day that we're having this meeting, it hasn't happened yet, so. That meeting's Monday. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Kirkner uh, is away this week. Um, I don't believe there's any action to report out of the PRPC. Ms. Dugan with Rec Board. 
Well, we don't have um, any new programs, and but we still have all kinds of things. So I would just recommend going to the website uh, to check out what we have there. But the rec department definitely wanted to pass on how excited they were with the fall festival. It went off so well. It was it was we had so many people and it was so much fun, as the mayor had already talked about. So that was it for that then. It is exciting to see the the just vast amount of use that our recreation center is now is now receiving. So it is uh, the only re well, only municipally owned recreation center in Chester County. Um, it's nice to see it's being fully programmed. Miss Webb with Beautification Advisory Commission. Um, there wasn't a meeting this month. There's still two open spots on the committee, so highly um, promote those. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Berkeley with Tree Advisory Commission. No updates currently. We meet again on the 14th, I think, because of the earliness of this meeting. Uh, I don't have any updates. Very good. Uh, we will move on to section 13 of our agenda, which is council referred to from uh, from council committees. Um, we were first up, uh, Ms. Berkeley, with police personnel and public safety. Right back to me. Uh, we meet again on Monday. That's the 7th. Um, I would also, we do have several vacancies across different committees. So it would be through that committee that we would talk with folks and interview them. So I would invite people to come out if they are interested or if you're interested, like BAC, TAC, go attend those committees and see what they're like, attend those commissions and see if you're, you are interested before you might apply. Mr. Moore with Parks and Rec Committee. I beg your pardon. Uh, there was some discussion in the previous month's meeting about the uh, temporary community events. Um, nothing further to report on that. And then we already acted on the um, the uh, application for the funding for the French Creek West grant. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, I will bounce back to uh, Ms. Berkeley for the report out for policy committee. Yeah. I would like to make a motion to recommend to Borough Council to schedule and advertise an ordinance to repeal and replace Chapter 23, Stormwater Management. Second. Motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by Mr. Weiss. Uh, this has been in policy for quite some time. I think the final iteration here is, um, is coming out strong. I don't know if Council has any questions on this prior to advertising the ordinance change. No, we... Um, this is just a schedule and advertise, but we did have a very nice discussion and presentation from our engineer. It was very helpful. Um, so, yeah. Yep. No, it was a good. It was a good presentation by Owen. Uh, with that, seeing no other questions, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed. Motion carries seven zero to schedule and advertise the stormwater management amendment or uh, ordinance repeal and replace. Uh, moving on, we will go to Mr. Weiss with infrastructure, technology, transportation, sustainability. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, no action to report at this time. Our next meeting, uh, lots going on, but no action to report. Our next meeting is uh, two weeks from today at 7 p.m. on the 15th. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. With that, Ms. Dugan with finance. Uh, there's nothing to discuss in this uh, at this time. Consent agenda works. Yep. Very good. We will now open up the second and final round of public participation. If members of the public uh, were not, not here at the beginning, uh, during the public participation periods, uh, you may join us via Zoom by raising your hand digitally and a member of our staff will uh, announce your name, unmute you, and you'll be able to address and make comments to council. Um, we'll start with any members of the public who are here in council chambers with us tonight, and then switch over to anybody joining us remotely. So if any members of the council or any members of the public who are here in council chambers at this time would like to make any additional public comment, uh, please step up to the podium and state your name and address. Um, and then we will move on to folks uh, joining us virtually. Uh, you know who I am, Tom DeLuca. Wow. I'm trying to hold in curse words and lots of them. What was the urgency? What was the urgency? For Pete's sake, who knows? Pardon, pun there, Mayor. Who knows when and if Odessa, when it will get built, okay? He did not meet all of his conditional approvals. 
go back and you read your motion from 10 months ago, he does not own the right to connect to our right away. You guys filled in that missing piece just now, overstepping your boundaries and filled in that missing piece. 2015, when you condemned the piece of land, you screwed up on the legal description. This piece should have been in there. It should have went right up to the right away of Ashburn. And it was not done that way. You're fixing a wrong then, and you're fixing a mistake right now for Moskowitz who didn't have a connection. He offered, Andrew from our board, offered an emergency access only. That would have been fine. There goes your answer. So you don't want to fix a damn tunnel. And now you add this, we're gonna have school buses, we're gonna have trash trucks, everything you want is gonna go down that road. And we know where the darn Northern Relief Route's gonna go. You're gonna get that piece of land from the racetrack and you're gonna reconfigure that connection where curves coming off of Ashburn to the West and you're gonna go straight down. And there's your final Northern Relief Route through a neighborhood. The moment you approve Fillmore Village and you put residents in there, the whole scheme of the Northern Relief Route through a more retail commercial area there was forever changed. This is a small residential neighborhood. The roads are not that wide. The homes are close to the streets. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. And if you follow through on this, I'm gonna be your new watchdog here. I'm gonna monitor each of these different committees. And when I see wrongs, I'm gonna voice my opinion. Whether I try to get on any of these planning boards and try to uh, work it from the inside, I don't know, I'd probably be better out here. But this is wrong and you should all be ashamed. I was counting on council here to stand up. Your residents, we're residents. You guys, if you're a paid employee, I understand you're trying to do the right thing for the community. I can't question your integrity, I don't know you, but you people are residents. Shame on you, damn it. One at a what, time, please. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be brief, I think. Uh, First of all, thank you for the great discussion. It was nice to hear a lot of the questions that we've had directed at the uh, HOA board uh, come up here in discussion. And it's interesting for me, even though I've been in Phoenixville for eight years, uh, to hear some of the conversations still for the first time. Um, two weeks, I don't know if that's substantial notice. Maybe that's legally uh, permissible, but we found out eight days ago. And in that eight days, we, we connected. You can see the representation here, plus more online at least 30 people express their doubt and uncertainty. And there's a big petition being filed also. Now I know you've motioned on this already, but already voted. I have to thank uh, those of you who uh, said no. So thank you, Mr. Moore, Ms. Dugan, um, and others who want to connect Phoenixville to the rest of Phoenixville. I totally get that in spirit. I live in the connection, the connected Phoenixville. I walk the trail, I bike the trail, just like everybody, right? We love it, we love it. How do people connect to Phoenixville? They come on the bike path, they come through the streets, they will come into our neighborhood, which is okay. Our neighborhood is a wonderful place where we love our neighbors. We also access the old neighborhood to get in the town. If you look at Fillmore Village, it has three entry points. And of course the emergency service can get through there, through the old neighborhood. And we can connect to the old, old neighborhood. I did see some of the old, discussions and old debates from your predecessors, as you referenced, making those decisions. And I did see some of the planning commission's work and the approval from the lower bodies. I'm a bit surprised that you would recognize the mistakes made there, recognize how planning on top of planning, decision to decision has led to a, a, a poor road design and then go ahead and stick with it. That's, that's, that's not saying we made a mistake. Let's do something about that. That's saying, let's just keep on muddling through. Because people, as they walk to town, will not just walk down Ashburn and Bunny. They'll walk to the rest of our neighborhood. So why not take all of the streets in our neighborhood if we're Phoenixville, if we're public? Yes, snow plowing. You already are responsible for the sewers. We know that, the whole neighborhood sewers. Because the community was expanded from 150 to 180 units. And that was a requirement. I learned that this week. We have some senior people in the neighborhood. So in one week, we learned a hell of a lot. I have questions now. So please, let's have a discussion, Ms. Webb. Mr. Kirkner is not here today. I understand he's on business. What a shame, because the conversation that happened here was good. And the conversations we have with Mr. Kirkner, he opened up 
a lot and said, look, this is tough. Your decision is tough. Why wasn't he allowed to be here for this conversation? Did he not ask you to table it and allow him to have it too? We asked you to. Your constituents asked you to table it. And if it's not urgent because interest rates are up, who knows if a decibel will happen or not? Why vote? It didn't have to be voted. That's all we asked for was give us some time to understand. And I understand in your mind, you've done all the understanding possible. You looked at the alternatives. I heard you say that. <laughs> the tunnel, can't you take imminent domain of the tunnel to restore that? Instead of putting yet another intersection with the Schuylkill River Trail? Thank you for the opportunity. It, it just seems to me that if there's not a sense of urgency and our representative, Mr. Kirkner, is not here, who's been most tied to it, Mr. Moskowitz told us he didn't need it and we're still moving forward with it. And there's pieces of it that even if you take this eminent domain, they're still in question with the deed that we should have time to have the right discussions, look at the right options before just rushing forward when there's no reason to rush forward. So thank you for the active discussion and listening to our residents. If any members joining us virtually on the Zoom platform are looking to make comments tonight during this uh, period of public participation, please raise your hand digitally. A member of our staff will uh, announce and um, unmute you. I'm not seeing any current hands raised digitally. Um, any other members of the public joining us here in person? Seeing none, we will close the second and final round of public participation and move on to item 15 of our agenda tonight, which is the second round of communications and council participation. Any other comments or questions or updates from any members of council? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to staff reports in your uh, monthly packets. Oh, Mr. Manager. Uh, just to add to uh, uh, a comment I made earlier in the, in the budget presentation that we pursue uh, grants and, and are very, uh, do very well at that. Uh, I got another letter from the county that we were awarded $400,000 towards the Paradise Street uh, project. So uh, that's gonna help us get the, uh, the connection from the fire station out to, uh, to Nut Road. That was exciting uh, and, and well-timed, well well-received um, as we continue to build out Paradise. That was um, a nice letter from the county. Um, sorry, in your packets, there was the updates from Manager Police, Fire Planning, Public Works, Finance, and Human Resources. Any questions on any of the items in tonight's packets? Uh, seeing none, I do not believe we have a need for uh, a second round of public participation. Sorry. A uh, second round of, uh, I do not believe we have a need for executive session tonight. I'm sorry. It's a long day. Mm -hmm. um, with that, what is council's pleasure? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Ms. Weiss. Or, sorry. It's a long day. Motion by Ms. Berkeley. Second by Mr. Carmenito. Questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you very much. Good night.